Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday. I am bringing to you some Sunday food. I can't take Oprah's uh, tag. She says Sun soul, soul Sunday, but this is Sunday food, healthy tips. I have with me a special queen, Sabrina Proctic. Um, she'll be coming here today to show some healthy tips, but also to inspire us with her vision, which is her book, Growing Ageless. Other than that, I want to thank all the viewers, all the audience that comes on here, support us, all the co-authors. Shout out to all the broadcast that is here that's doing it and keeping everyone informed and spreading awareness through COVID-19. So I'm going to bring Sabrina here with us. Um, she's such uh, uh, jewels, jewels for days. She's giving it to you. So I'm going to introduce you, Sabrina. Thank hello. you for tuning in. Hello. Oh, I'm so excited, to know. Thank you. I am doing wonderful on this beautiful afternoon. I want to thank you and your audience for having me and, and bringing me into yes. your homes and into your lives today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So before we get started, I'm gonna walk away, go back in the green room, and then you're just gonna talk about who you are, you know, all your degrees and accomplishments <laughs> and what your journey is looking like, okay? And I'll be right back, okay? Thank you, thank you. So hello, here I am. I'm Sabrina Protic, wife, mother, grandmother, grandmother of twins, grandmother of a nine-year-old. Um, I'm going to consider myself a newlywed because I married four years ago. So I'm still in that honeymoon stage. And I'll tell you why I'm still in the honeymoon stage. My husband still likes me to look nice around the house. So he doesn't like the, the, the sweatpants and, you know, kind of bummy kind of look. So, and that's okay because I keep the bar high. And consequently, that's how I got to growing ageless. It's about being the best you at any time of your life and really developing yourself, developing the tools and developing who you are. So I look forward to telling you more about growing ageless, telling you more about who I am and how you can enjoy life at any age. And when we talk about growing ageless, we're not talking about the exterior that does come into play. We're talking about the interior. We're talking about the mind. We're talking about redeveloping a mindset that evolves into the exterior and the things that people see. So growing ages is about you inside and out. And we're not growing older. We are growing ageless. That means that we can be whoever we want to be at any given point in our lives. And I'm living proof of that because I started redevelopment of me Later in life, much later in life, to give you an idea of that, I went back to school in my mid-40s and got my college degree in my mid-40s. Here I am, 48 years old, walking across the stage, getting my bachelor's degree while my kids studied in the audience and cheered me on. And you know, I mentioned that in my book. I mentioned how you're never too old to do anything in life. And look at the example and the legacy that we leave for our children. So I'm so happy to be able to share those things with you. I look forward to talking more with you about growing ageless. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. So Sabrina, walk us through, um, you have a bunch of things going on here in Florida. Walk us yes. through your, your group, as far as your group, your tribe, but what you have in place, which empowerment. Walk us through a little oh, bit. Oh, excellent, excellent. So a part of my growing ageless was to reintegrate myself into society and to make connections because oftentimes we become champions in our own world, meaning king of our castle, queen of our home. And that's all we have is that immediate family. And I found myself only being important to my kids and my dog. <laughs> my dog was happy yeah. to see me every day, but I didn't have a life. And I realized I needed to integrate and associate with other like-minded people. And so I immediately started going out and going to networking events and networking groups. And I did that for a year. I was driving over a hundred miles, believe it or not. I was going outside of my own city to develop relationships. And these were powerful relationships. I'm talking attorneys and doctors and that type of thing. 
nurses, business owners. But as I did that, I realized I really wasn't developing relationships. I was passing out business cards and I was receiving business cards, but nothing happened after that. I didn't feel like I was empowered. I didn't feel like I was empowering anyone else. Nothing was happening. And I really couldn't even go back and, and make a connection yeah. because it was very much business. Yeah. So I decided to start my own organization. And I thought mm. about what I wanted to come out of that. And I named it WE, Women's Entrepreneurial Empowerment, basically to focus on women who were in the entrepreneurial phase of their life and to empower them. So I kind of named it. I came up with the WEE because I wanted some acronyms to stand for a very powerful objective. And yeah. so what I did was um, I went to a few networking events and I, yeah. I would talk to these women. I said, you know, would you like to take this networking event one step further? I'm forming an organization of just women where we would empower and promote one, one another. And I really wanted these women to have exposure, yeah. not just get a business card. I wanted right. them to do what you're doing. Right. <laughs> I wanted people to know who they were. And they said, That's sure. Right. So here I started with six people and we met at a, our first meeting was at Sweet Tomatoes. I remember that. We met at Sweet Tomatoes for a meeting of these women. And then the next time at Eulalia, the next thing I know, we had a formal group of what I call uh -huh. powerful entrepreneurial women. And that was four years ago, four years ago. And now the organization, we have over just under 500 women in our Facebook group and wow. about uh, in our over 500 and about, I want to say 10 to 12, what I call ambassadors. These are women okay. that uh, they're, they're my ride to die women. These are women that are, that are, they commit, they commit every month to a collaboration meeting. Uh, they support yes. the events. They're out in the community. They're the ones that say, what do you need? What can I do? They're the ones that post messages of motivation and inspiration. Uh, they, they are there. They're the eyes and ears and they can speak on behalf of we. So if I have an engagement, if I have something where I can't yeah. be there, they can be there. They're the ambassadors. Love the women. At, hey, women ambassadors. Wow. <laughs> They're the eyes yeah, and ears. Group. Wow. Yes. The eyes and Thank ears. Thank you for that. Um, that was the first thing that I said, wow, oh my God. You know, we, we all market, we network, but we do not know how to build successful, healthy, trustworthy relationships. So yes. thank yes. you for that. Um, so now that everyone knows you're just kind of talker, but you're a walker, you're a doer, <laughs> I want to dive into this book. I also want everyone to know that this book, Growing Ageless, you got to get it because it really speaks for itself. So there's a chapter I would like for you to break down, Sabrina. I hope you don't mind. Oh, please do. And I'm excited. Yes. Mirror Moments. So let me just read this mirror moments here. If there was a dire emergency that required you to run to save your life or someone else's, could you do it? That's an extreme case, but it's worth taking a hard look at where you are with your energy and your body's ability to move when needed. Start now by mentally resolving to be a body in motion. Wow. Say yes when inviting to do things, especially the things that require you to live your home. Remember me, M-E-M, -E mind, energy, motion. Write it on your mirror. This is powerful. Come on, Sabrina. Give us the I good to, stuff. I got to bring you into space with that. Well, I will tell you, I remember um, married and had kids and I had let myself go. I couldn't even run a block without getting winded. It was really bad. And I thought, what has happened to me? Have I allowed this to happen to me? So yeah. what if my kids were drowning or something? Could I run, go get help? Could, could I assist? Could I even run from a fire and save my own life? No. Mm -hmm. And so I realized I had allowed myself to get what they call out of shape, but I really wasn't physically fit. So, yeah. so many of us, when we get to a certain age, we become comfortable and content and we sit mm -hmm. a lot. 
We sit in our cars. We sit in front of our computer. <laughs> we sit in front of the TV. We sit in a meeting, yeah. but we're really yeah. not out engaging. We're not moving. So my thought process is, could you move quick enough to save your own life or save somebody else's life? And if the answer is <laughs> no, you, it's time for a change. Yeah. It's time for that mirror That's moment. Right. It's time for you to realize you need to make a change, right, Janelle? It's time to get off that sofa and move, even if it's just a walk. That's right. And so um, it has to start with you and your own mindset for your body. So even when I'm walking, I will tell you, I get about 10,000 steps in a day. That's about five revolutions on this little track that I go through. When I'm getting tired, when I'm getting tired, you know what I say to myself? What if somebody was chasing me? What if somebody was mm-hmm. after me right now? Could I run from them? Yes. Could I run to yes. save my own yes. life? Yes. And so that's my motivation to keep going. Girl, you need to keep going. Get your heart rate up, right? Get the muscles, get the joints going so that you can save your own life. So those little walks, uh, jogging yes. if you can, they're life-saving measures. That's part of the mirror moment. Mm-hmm. Get yourself that's together. Right. That's right. Right. That's right. That's when when you're so exhausted and always tired. It's like, wait a minute, because if we don't do anything about it, it just goes downhill from there. You know, exactly. That's part of our vitality. Also, I heard a doctor say the key to living longer is being in motion. Movement. Movement is what keeps us young. Just simple movement. So, yeah, we have to do that. I wow. found myself I just uh, so sharing to the group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, get up and move. And I, you don't have to be a rock star, but walking is the best form of exercise. And I, as a matter of fact, I read an article, which is better for you, walking or running, and they kind of weighed it out. Well, if you're trying to do pure weight loss, running is probably the quickest. But if you're trying to simply maintain a healthy body, walking is better. So I would encourage everybody to get out there, be a body in motion. Do that mirror moment. I have my book too. <laughs> and it's all yes. about the mirror moment. And believe it or not, I refer to my own book. I will go and refer to my own book about some things because it's gentle reminders Ooh. about some things. Yes, right. I go. Now, my author copy is pretty tattered and torn. This is just a fresh copy, but my book is very used. I have, I have corners turned down on mine too because there, there are things yeah. that I like to refer back to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, the key word or the key statement was write it on a mirror. Tell us why is that so important? So you can see it. So oftentimes, let's think about this. When we have weight loss goals, where will you put them on your refrigerator? Why is that? Because that's where you're going to go violate. <laughs> when you open yeah. that refrigerator door, something's going to happen. Well, if yes. you write it on your mirror, if you write it on your mirror, that's when you that's when you look at yourself. The only time of the day that we look at ourselves is in the mirror. That's the only chance we get unless we take <laughs> our cell phone and flip it around. But that's the right. only time of day that we really get to face ourselves. And so yeah. that's where you want it. Um, to give you an idea of that, my my last big event that I did was a charity event that I did for Dress for Success back in mm-hmm. October. Um, I needed, I needed to have my goals and everything that I was trying to do and everything I was trying to accomplish. I need to see that every day. You know where I put Mm -hmm. it on my mirror. I put my mirror moments on my mirror and on that mirror moment was what needed to happen and what I needed to accomplish and what I needed to do. So I saw that every day. So Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking it, I'm walking it and I needed to see that every day. Not, yes. not, in a, not in a notebook that I had to open. That's right. You know, not in my phone I had to turn on. Right, right there on that mirror. And that really worked for me because guess what? Everything that I had on that, the notes, actually yes. happened. Come on. Everything, Come on. At, right, down to, right down to the attendance, uh, how I wanted to help these charities, everything that I wanted to accomplish because I saw that every day that was – I was yes. facing that every day. Those were my mirror moments. Every day I was able to accomplish that. It's very powerful. I hope that you ladies and men will try that. And it doesn't have to be written on a mirror. You can take a sticky. I had a yellow sticky and I had it right there on my mirror. My husband will tell you, he's like, what is that you're putting on the mirror? 
it's what I need to face. It's it's what I need to face. So yeah, this book is loaded at at the end of each chapter, Janelle, as you saw, there are mirror moments at the end of each chapter of how you need to reprogram your mindset and what you need to do. And I actually tell you in some instances, look in the mirror and say this or look in the mirror and think that. So yes, very powerful. And mm-hmm. if you don't yeah. mind, I would. If you don't yeah. mind, the cover of the book when I was designing my cover, you know what I wanted? I wanted a mirror moment. Wow. That's the reason for the mirror. So that's why you see a lady facing the mirror, and mm-hmm. I wanted her to be pretty much generic. I wanted her to be a generic lady because all of us have different genres about ourselves. But yeah. I wanted her facing herself in the mirror. And so I actually hand drew that up. I hand drew it up and I was telling my publisher, this is what I'd like. And she Uh, found, you know, they kept putting things in front of me because I wanted us to see, we have to face that every day. Could we see it one more time? Can you show it? I'm gonna, there we go. Growing ageless. Yeah, let me get it where you can see. And see how she's facing the mirror? Yes, yes. Yep, and so that, uh, yeah, that was powerful. We have to be able to see ourselves every day. That's right. And um, it's about like when you're on a diet, you don't want to get on the scale. Why don't you want to yeah. get on the scale? Because maybe you were bad that week. You don't want to face mm-hmm. it. But the best thing you can do for yourself is get on that scale, even if you were bad, because you need to face yourself. Yes. Wow. You need to be accountable to you. So those mm-hmm. mirror moments, you need to be accountable. Yes. You know, yes. you need to say, hey, you know what? Uh, we need to get the road, Jack. Get out there and do some some physical exercise or reprogram yourself. There's a chapter in the book that talks about, uh, you know, being programmed, how you jump in your car. This has happened to everybody. Have you ever driven somewhere and said, wow, I don't even, you were on autopilot? I know yes. you've all done it. You just drove yeah. there like you're, you didn't even think about it. Somehow you went from point A to point B because you're on autopilot where your mind knows you're on autopilot. It just like programs yourself. And I talk about having those mirror moments and say, hey, Don't do the same thing you do every day. Tell yourself today it's going to be different. Tell yourself today, I'm not going to eat at that restaurant I always eat at, right? I'm not Mm going to do X, Y. I'm not going to sit down at 8 o'clock and watch Rawhide or something. I'm going to do something Mm -hmm. different. When you just change one thing in your day, you've changed the whole chemistry of your life by changing Mm -hmm. one thing. Then you get off of that autopilot. That's right. So important. Some people are so routine. Take the routine out. <laughs> Live a little bit. Right Come about. on. <laughs> right. Live a little bit. Okay. Live a little bit. So also you have never stop trying new things. That's that's important. Tell us a little bit about that. Why was it important for us to try new things? So there's an experience in the book I talk about. I I was very much routine and I would go to the same restaurant every day. And and I know this has happened to a lot of you. You're so regular that when you walk in the door, they start filling your order right away. Yes. They know that's what you're going to get. So they're filling my order. And this one day they filled my order and the price had changed. I don't know when the price changed. Mm -hmm. I was ready. I had exactly five dollars and thirty four cents. I was ready. And the price had changed. And I didn't realize things had changed. I'm still in that same mode. And I was like, wow. And that's when it hit me. It's like, I am so programmed. I have the exact amount of change. I order the same thing every day. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I'm in this cycle. It was like a wake up. Because I was like, what? The price changed. I thought it was $5.34. I could still tell you exactly how much it was. And then Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, no. A price went up. And and then I was like, wow. I need to change my life. This is boring. (laughs) When I can't walk in a restaurant and order something different and be prepared for the change, there's something wrong. Yes, that was a mirror moment for me. And that was when I'm I'm saying to my readers, it's like, are you that programmed that you don't even know? So, you know what that experience taught me? I started going to different places for lunch and doing something different. And I enjoyed the change. I enjoyed doing that. And along the way, I met new people. I expanded my network. So many benefits came out of that. And I don't even go to that restaurant anymore. (laughs) Not that they did anything bad. Right. But I, I, I grew up, I expanded. I didn't realize I had, you know, I was in a hole. I was in a vortex and I had to get out of that. So in order for us to grow yeah. and to have growth moments, yeah. to live ageless, to grow ageless, 
We need yeah. to make a change. We need to do something different. Um, yeah. And it could start with something as simple as, you know, trying a new item on a restaurant or trying a totally different restaurant. Now, I know we, we can't really get out like that right now. So yeah. maybe try a different food. Try Eat something that you've never eaten before. When you go yeah. shopping, pick up an item like, you know, I always want to try this. Yes. I'm going to try yes. it. Yes. I'm going to do something Absolutely. different. Absolutely. So that's important wow. to adding life back into your life and enjoying life is is trying to, and that's the mirror yeah. moment. So I want to ask everyone that's listening, look at yourself in the mirror. If not tonight in the morning, because the morning's the best time, that's when it's a fresh you. Yes. Ask yourself, wow. what one thing can I change today? Just one mm. and change it and see how you feel about it. It's going to blow you away. Oh, wow. And stores. Very powerful. This is powerful. This is good stuff, Sabrina. You're dropping down some good nuggets because we live in a society where people don't like change. We go, we drive, yeah. we see the same thing. You know, sometimes it's good to take an alternative route. You know, sometimes it's good to, to have a different scenery. So this is really good. Now, there's a, another chapter in here says, coming out as you. Break that down. Coming out as you, that's important. Because yeah. uh, sometimes we find out that we've been what other people want us to be. Even parents yes. are guilty of this. Sometimes we want our kids yes. to be a certain thing. We almost, from mm -hmm. birth, we've already, already identified what their career choices are gonna be. Sometimes yes. even in marriages, you know, and why is it real to this too? You know, mm -hmm. honey, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. You should try this. You should do that. Or yeah, maybe you should be working for this company or that company. And we really yeah. don't allow the creativity and flexibility. So, yes, yes. So I had been in this pretty much the stigma of a life, you know, mother, divorced, yes. two kids, same job, same everything. And I hadn't discovered who I was. What was it I really wanted to do? That's right. I, you know, That's right. What, what excites what excites Sabrina? What excites yes. Sabrina? And part of my excitement was people, as you can see, because I'm very much people oriented. But it was mm -hmm. connecting people. I was coming out as me, and I found that I even enjoyed different scenery, different colors. I enjoyed vibrancy. I enjoyed great yeah. conversation. I realized this is who I am. This is the essence of who That's I right. am. So That's right. I'm going to say I was walking into my territory. <laughs> That's right. That's walking right. That's into, right. Walking into my territory because I identify who that was. So part of the mirror moment mm -hmm. is for each one of us to take a personal assessment of who yes. we are. What, what really excites us? And let me tell you, it's not too old to be that. It's not That's too right. old. You haven't gotten that further along in your life that you cannot evolve and be you. It's mm -hmm. never too late. Mm -hmm. You are living proof of that. I'm proof of that. I pretty much started my life over at 50. I started over. And it has been exhilarating. Um, getting my college degree at age 48. Uh, redeveloping myself, writing a book, starting a women's empowerment organization, starting an anti-aging business. Uh, I mean, I took a lot in and I'm still yes. developing. I'm still, I'm still in an evolving stage because I love helping people. And um, as a matter of fact, now I'm opening up the mind again because you want to mm -hmm. know what is Sabrina doing and, and, and how does this mean coming out as you? So here I am. I'm learning uh, how to financially educate people uh, because I skipped a step. I also became certified as a life coach. See, when I wrote this book, this yes. is important. This is important. As I'm writing this book and I'm journaling down my processes, I also wanted confidence that I'm, I'm an authority, not only because I did the journey, but also that I could be an authority in the realm of helping people change their mindset. Set. So I became a certified life coach because I wanted the tools. I've got the journey, but I wanted the yeah. tools to be able to help people change their mindset. That's part of this growing ageless. And it's mentioned in the book that I'm a certified life coach. 
Well, in the past year of me doing this, I realized that something else is that needed to be added to this. And this is yeah. being able to coach people financially because part of a lot of struggles in life, and even when I went through this as a single parent, is the financial struggle. Yeah. That's that's a really big deal. And especially yeah. now. So I wanted the skills and the tool set because this is powerful. You see, you can redevelop yourself at any age. You can take on anything at any age. Don't you're not too old. So here I am at my age. I'm learning that and I'm getting the tools and the skill set to be able to help people in that way. So all, what I'm saying, Janelle, is there is no certain time in your life where you yeah. stop growing, where you stop evolving, where you stop coming out as you. There, mm. Sky's the limit. Doesn't matter. I'm encouraging everyone. Figure out what it is you want and figure out what it is you need to do. It's going to take work on your part to do it. Get the coaching, assistance, training, skill set, whatever it is you need, because you're going to need something to do that and then go for it. Mm. It's going to be wonderful. It's an ageless yeah. life. I call it yes. living ageless. Ageless. Yes, yes. Tell me, so just deviating just a little bit, why do you think people do not want to jump in their newness or 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 just try it well, what is what tell us i'm going to tell you a big thing effort i'm going to tell you a big word is effort because it does take effort so i'm sure you've heard people say uh well you know what i, I want to do this but then the but comes up then the book comes mm -hmm. up it's like well it's going to require the 10 hours a week of my time i just don't have that time right now yeah. uh it, it's going to require that i I spend a hundred dollars to buy a special tool. I mean, I just don't, I, I don't have that, but you know, we will spend a hundred dollars on something silly any day, any given day of the week, we will go and spend a hundred dollars, whether it's in one sitting or cumulative, maybe $30 here and $70 there and something we don't even need. Yeah. So seeing the value in it. So I would say that it's effort when we find out, and I'm going to give you a good example of that with this book. When I had talked about writing the book, the first question I asked was, what is that going to require? Not so much financial, it was effort. It was resources. Right. It was time. It was time. Right. Right. And she says, well, it's going to be 10 chapters. I said, okay, well, how long is a chapter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, am I, what am I doing? What am I doing right now? I'm trying to figure out, am I, you know, am I going to want to commit to that? Am I going to commit that? Because what I was doing was I was trying to figure out my commitment. See, yeah. that's what happens. People want to know, what is it going to take? And then again, am I going to do it? And so I was asking, you know, what do, what do I have to commit to? So she told me, my, oh, I got to write that many words? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I don't know if I can do that. Right away, the nose went up. The nose went right. up. I said, oh, right. oh, no, I can't, I can't do that. No, I can't. Look, it happened, didn't it? It happened. But the nose went up because right away, we start. It's the energy. It's like the energy just leaves our body. Just hearing yeah. what we have to do. And yeah. and I got some great coaching. They said, oh, Sabrina, you can do it because I needed some coaching. You can do this. And, and so really all it took was a schedule. I had to develop mm -hmm. a schedule. And I talked to my family about it, which is my husband. This is, this is what I need to do to accomplish X, Y, Z. Because when we live with somebody else, we have to have their support. That's another thing. You don't always have to, but it makes the road a little bit easier yeah. if you have yeah. their support. And um, so I dedicated a certain night a week to do that. And I didn't finish until a chapter was done. So understanding what it's going to take mm -hmm. and then committing to those resources. And a lot of times you tell people, well, you know, uh, go get your college degree. Well, what is that going to take? Well, that's four years of school. Four years. I'm not, I'm not going to give up four years of my life. Well, the reality is you are going to devote four years of your life to something. It may not be school because maybe you didn't choose to do it. But you're going to devote four mm -hmm. years of your life to a job, to your kids, to your husband, to your to your your fun, your basketball games, whatever. It is. You're going to devote four years of your life to something. Now you can choose for that to be school, but yeah. those four years are going to go yeah. by. So I would say that's why people don't make those near moment changes. Why they they yeah. struggle with coming out as them because yeah. it does require effort and resources and those resources can be time or money but it's going to yes. be a resource wouldn't wow. you agree with that 
I do, I do. You know, as you're talking, my 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 wheels is going. But you know, I'm I'm a marketer. I've done this for 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. And I didn't do this for me. I did it for employers. I was uh-huh. so skilled to it. I was so OCD because it was like I needed to learn my module but I'm giving it for my employers. But it was the pleasure of seeing the ratings of customer service, the ratings of internal, external, the rate, the ratings of the community. And, 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 and I'll tie it in with this because I'll tie it in, Sabrina. I thought that that was all for me, right? Is marketing for doctors, making them all this money, and, I, and I, I was so contented because I was serving the community, serving my job, serving the doctors, but didn't even realize the gifts that I had. So I got hungry when I transitioned here and I'm like, something's missing. So when you say growing ageless, I said to myself, wait a minute, I'm old. You know, what am I going to do? I settle. And then I'm like, wait a minute. It just all came. She exists. She exists. Now, I'm going to tie that in because sometimes we feel that we're doing everything that we can and we're working. But you don't even know the half that you can be doing because you're not even focusing in that area. So when you say coming out as you are we really coming out as 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 an individual you talked about you know going to school giving four years if you don't give four years to school you're gonna give four years to yourself that's right Sabrina I gave 20 years to ophthalmology to other people and they can show for it and I am now two years coming up doing this thing and I've seen so much results because it wasn't about the money. It's about the module that I'm putting together and the networking and building the relationships. So I'm just going to say when I read this book, it confirmed I'm on the right path. So everything that I've done for them, because I'm telling you, it, you, you, the everyone was having their lunches, their their dinners, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. giving awards, celebrating off of my hard work. But guess what, Sabrina? I wasn't at that chair celebrating with them, right? Mm-mm-mm. I wasn't invited to the to the table. Whoo! Wow, that's powerful. Because see, you were not coming out as you. You were actually tied into them. You were you had your own skills, but your skills were not benefiting you. They were benefiting them. So now you realize the value. Yeah. Changing your mindset, changing your mindset yes. that you yes. that you harness some particular skills and you're going for it. you're using those skills to benefit you and and your your network of people around you. That's the yes. difference. Um, I was talking with someone the other day about the movie Harriet Tubman. Okay, yes. I, I'm sure a lot of our listeners has watched. Well, she made a, a famous quote, well, one of many. And she says, I freed over a hundred slaves. I would have freed more if only they knew they were slaves. Ooh. Wow. Wow. I love that quote. I love it. Mm-hmm. And I, I would have freed more. Now, if you think about one of the scenes in the movie when she went back for her sister, her sister didn't want to leave the plantation. Her sister was enslaved, but she didn't realize because they were treating her good. You know, she was able to be in the house while the other slaves were outside in their little, you know, cabins or whatever. But she felt a certain blessing because she was inside, but she was still a slave. She didn't see herself in that way. She thought she was getting the blessing, but she wasn't. And her sister begged her, Harriet, come on, come go, come go. No, I'm not going. I'm not going. And then a year later, her sister was dead. You see, so she gave up the opportunity to come out as her 
all Harriet was saying was, look, there's a better way. There's a better life. You don't realize yeah. you could be doing so much more with who you are. And she didn't realize it. Yes. So I'm celebrating you from that standpoint, Janelle, because you realized that you didn't yeah. have the freedoms, the freedoms to come out as you. Yeah. And now you do. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Now that's what I'm talking it, about. It, it, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. The freedoms to be yes. you and yes. recognize that. And sometimes it means detaching, detaching from other things. It means walking away yes. from other things. And also in this, the times that we're in now, when something happens to us where maybe we didn't volunteer to be detached and we find ourselves detached, because of the things that are happening around us in our economy right now, that's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to come out as you. It's an opportunity for you to say, you know what? Yeah. I could never fully develop myself because I was tied into this. Well, I'm not tied yeah. into this anymore. This is an yeah. opportunity for me to develop yeah. myself. You, you, you've been down that road. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Use this as an yes. opportunity, yes. right? For that mirror mm -hmm. moment to come out as you, yes. there's so much potential, yes. so much. Absolutely, but but here, here, here's the, the greater part. You know, when they were inviting the doctors and they were talking about all this money they've made and everything like that, you know, I was grateful that I could be a part, you know, behind the scenes to make all this money, but I was really serving the community but now this with my module, I want to be able to be a part to celebrate others, you know, and and celebrate it together with celebrating. So, you know, I'm working on this project, stepping in our territory. I'm so grateful for all the authors, even the publisher. OK, because she's one of the authors. But I'm celebrating. We're celebrating these moments together. We're, we're like sisters, you know. And that's to me, it's not about a dollar. It's more than that. And we're growing ageless together. You yes, know? Yes. So I, I wanted to just, write to, I mean, your book, I encourage you all to get this book, guys, because it has some, 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 some critical nuggets that you need if you're not tapping into them. So I want to set into another script. I call it scriptures. I might as well call it. It's scriptures, okay, girl. Right? <laughs> set, yes. Know what your body can do. Let's dive into that a little bit. Well, yeah, so your body is capable of doing a lot of things. We actually sell ourselves short. And uh, I remember yeah. a couple of years ago talking about uh, fitness. I'm going to go to fitness again. And I signed up uh, to do a fitness class. And uh, I couldn't even touch my toes. Woo! Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. I didn't realize. I, I when this is done, I want everybody to try to touch their toes and see where you're at with that. <laughs> I couldn't even touch yeah. my toes, and I was like, "Wow, I've really let myself go." This is in, a, in addition to walking, it's just the very basics. I had to get this body back in shape, and that involves yeah. regular attention to you physically. It's like, what are you doing with yourself every day? Your body, the human body is capable of doing so much, way more, way more than we give it credit for. And I'm here to tell you at my age, my daughter, uh, when I was taking this class, she decided to come join me in the class. And there I am lifting weights. And now I was doing push-ups. I was doing push-ups. And she couldn't do mm -hmm. what I was doing. She couldn't do it. Now, there's a 30-year spread between me and my daughter. I think I had it when I was in my 30s. And here her mother was being able to do something that she could do. Okay. And why was it? Because I was taking advantage of what my body could do. She wasn't. So it doesn't have anything to do with age. And she made a video and she says, well, I want to let it. She did a Facebook. I want to let everybody know. I went and did a workout with my mom and my mom beat me out on these push-ups and these weights. <laughs> and, and I mean, this yeah. is a young, a young girl. So the body is capable yeah. of doing anything that we train it to do. Anything that we train it to do, don't ever say we can't. When it's a mindset, exactly. When you say, "Ah, no, yeah. I can't do that," <laughs> what you're doing is you're, the mm -hmm. mind, because mm -hmm. the mind is powerful. The mind is telling the body not to do yeah. it. So we got to change yeah. that thinking, and you tell yourself, "I am going to do it. 
I'm going to lift these 20 yes. pounds. I'm going to lift these 30 pounds. I can do it. I can do these 20 reps. I can do it. I can touch my toes. You have to program your body. And that, again, that's the agelessness. You see, when I say ageless, when I can stand next to my daughter and we can do the yes. same things, wow. Yes. Have I not tapped into the fountain yeah. of youth or what? When I can sit and work out with her? Yes. And then eventually, as she got into her routine, eventually she's going to be stronger than me because she's a little bit younger. But I yes. was, I, at that point in time, we were not equal. I was here, she was there. As she began to get herself in shape, of course she would surpass me. But at that point I was here. But uh, what I'm saying is the body is capable. So don't think mm. that I see, I see these moms mm. and, oh, my kids are doing that. No, you can get out there. I raced my granddaughter. I raced her right in front of our house. She's seven. She's nice. That was two years ago. And I said, now you want to go for it? She just giggled. She, oh, she just, that lit her up. I'm not going to tell you who won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I mean, we videotaped it. We videotaped the race. I mean, I was, I was pumping. I was pumping. I was pumping. She was too. But you know what? She had a young body. She was going. She was going strong. I'm not going to tell you, but it was close. It was close. Um, right. It was close. <laughs> it was close. I think I think it's one of those video moments where you have to watch to see whose foot actually hit the, hit the, yeah, the line. Right. Um, right. But I will tell you how many grandmothers can race their grandchildren. Wow. I mean, a full on race. How many can do that? See, that's wow. enjoying life. That's the potential of your body. It next is. thing you know, next thing you know, it Janelle, is. all the I must have had five neighborhood kids that came up wanting to race. You know, I'm not doing this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not right. doing this myself. I'm gonna challenge Mimi today. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, wow. you know what? Okay, good you stuff. You have to tell me about that one. Tell me who won. Yeah, I'm gonna do it today. Actually, yep, I'm gonna do it today. Oh, you'll have fun. Um, okay, so there's three more. Thank you. There's three more chapters I wanted to get into. Ditching the black. Oh, oh. wow. Wow, that was powerful. So um, I oh. was going through depression because I had gone through a major life change. And so when I when I talk about the book Growing Ages, I'm really talking to people who've had some major life changes. Aging is a major life change. Uh, having surgery, a health issue is a major life change. Going through a divorce is a major life change. So I had the picture perfect life. I had, look, when, when we're kids, especially women, you know, a dream to us is getting married and having a family. Isn't that kind of how we're programmed, isn't it? We're programmed to want that yeah. family life. I had the family life, the husband, the kids, the dog, the house, everything seemed picture perfect. Then one day it fell apart. And we're not going to talk about the details of that, but I found myself divorced in my 40s with two kids, and I felt like my life was over. I'm like, ah, uh, I've missed my window now. I don't look yeah. like I used to look when I was in my 20s. Um, I'm going to be dead weight to someone because I have two kids. Who's going to want me? Who's going to want to take a ready? They call it a ready made. Who's going to want a ready made? And um, I just felt like my life was over. And so I secluded myself, isolated myself. I wore black. Every day for about three years. I mean, it was bad. Everything, everything in my closet was black. And I think that that signified a couple of things. I was hiding. Mm. I was I was in mourning. I felt unwanted, and I felt I felt like I was unattractive. I felt very unattractive, and so I sheltered. I hid inside of that one black mm. outfit to the next. I hid myself into it because that's how I saw myself. And even my coworkers would comment. Oh, Sabrina, you're wearing black again today. You're wearing black. You're wearing black. You're wearing black. Is that all you have is black? <laughs> but I felt no. I felt safe inside of that color. Well, as I began to come out as me, having those mirror moments, realizing the need to integrate with people and redeveloping myself, I threw that uh uh. This has got to go. What have I been doing? It's like the veil was lifted. Yeah. Get some color to your life. Let's ramp it up a notch. And so I just started integrating color into my life. Everything from my house, I took a, a wall in my house, I think, and I painted that wall. I painted that wall like a bright burgundy or something. It was your pretty much your standard mm -hmm. colors, you know. And I, I added color in my house. I added color in my wardrobe. 
I added color in my car. I made sure, is this book colorful or what? <laughs> yeah, greens, yeah, yeah. And, greens and blues. I wanted yeah. something colorful. Yeah. I wanted life, I, I, you know, color. Mm -hmm. I wanted life. And so life is about vibrance to me, exhilaration and vibrance. And so yeah. when people see me, I want them to feel that when they see me. I, I, I don't want to look drab. I lived in that drab world. And mm. I want it more than that. So if I do wear black, I always accessorize it with some bright, vibrant colors because yeah, that just brought me down. It just put me, it, it put me down. And even my swimsuit, yeah. my swimsuit was black. My swimsuit was black. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got past that, but I hid in that. So yeah. I've, I've actually, uh, Janelle, had... Quite a few women have told me when they read the book, they realized they were wearing a lot of black. Yep. yep. They said, you know what, Sabrina? I wear a lot of black. Yep. You see, <laughs> black pants. Yeah. Everybody yeah. owns the black leggings. We all own the black, yeah. the black <laughs> spanks or whatever. That's fine. Put a bright yeah. green top right. with it. Put a, put a fuchsia right. top right. with it. Dress that black mm -hmm. up. But a mm -hmm. lot of women mm -hmm. found that they were wearing black. And when you think about mm -hmm. it, that just really doesn't give anybody a whole lot to look at. And you're wearing a lot of black. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. just saying. Right. And then you don't even realize it. You don't no, realize it's it. It's true. Now I wear I wear a black too because um it, it, it makes me look a little smaller and ah, it's that's... easy. Everything goes everything goes with that. But when my husband read this part, he was like, Babe, do you know we have a lot of black in the closet? See? <laughs> and then I took a look and it was like we both do it, you know, even to like my old website. I don't know. It's like, but I think too, we are so conditioned to just picking that, that, cause that's all we see. That's the first thing that we see, but not knowing that that's like glooming us at times, you know, that is so, so true. Janelle, right. I actually, yeah, um, absolutely right. I, I actually researched yeah. the color black. It could go both ways. It signifies don't come in my space. I won't come in yours. Or it, it could mean power to a certain degree. It depends on who you, you know. But really, in the space that we right. want to be in, right. in the people connecting people space, yes. it's really not the best color. It really isn't because it doesn't speak right. vibrance. Right. It really doesn't speak energy. And it doesn't speak vibrance. Yes. So if you want to transmit that energy, black is probably not the color that you want to surround yourself with. You can have wow. it in the room, you can have it there, but good. Um, passing that on. <laughs> and I wore it too, because I thought it made me look thin. I was hiding in it. Yeah. It does, a, but I will tell good you something. Stuff. Solid colors, just, just I'm gonna pass on some tips. I did color draping, I've done a lot of things in my lifetime. And I also used to sew a lot when I was uh -huh. younger. I made all my own clothes. One thing, patterns will make you look heavier. So that stripes, unless you, if you yeah. wear the stripes or straight up and down, you look thinner. If they go this way, forget it. So uh, patterns, yeah. patterns will make you look bigger. Solid colors make you look smaller. So you can get away with wearing a bright color. So this is a solid color. Now you can accessorize it with a pattern, mm -hmm. but make sure the patterns are not around your heaviest pieces of your body. Keep it away from your waist. Your waist should always be a solid color of something. Because that's, where, <laughs> that's right. where we have a problem. Ooh. That's where we have the problem. Oh, I wow. just gave you a tip. I just gave you a little tip on wow. accessorizing in color. I did that in um, another part of my life. So accessorizing, color draping. I can tell you about colors and your season. And I will tell you that you're winter. So you look best in uh, really strong colors. You can wear purples. You can wear reds. Yeah. You can wear fuchsia pinks. You can wear all of those colors as your winter. And that's your that's when your face and your skin will radiate. There you go. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let's go on to humility, my favorite one. Growing with humility. Let's talk about that. Well, you know what? The key to power is being humble. That is the real key is being humble, realizing yeah, yeah. that's right. You have to be humble. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. when you walk in a room, people say you walk in a room like you own the room. Well, what's ownership? I'm not talking about ownership. 
when I walk into the room, I want to see my future connections yeah. and I, I want I want more. I don't want to walk in like I own the room. I walk into a room of people. I want to get I just mm-hmm. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know you. And that's humility. I introduce mm-hmm. myself like they're more powerful than I am. What's up? Uh, Janelle, how, who are you? Nice to meet you. Tell me about you before I start blurbing off who I am, like I'm all that. It's uh, you. So you make it about other people. The, the validation about who you are, that will come. That comes after you validate other people. When you take an interest in other people, you let their light shine. Mm. By means of you letting their light shine, you shine. That's a pretty simple formula. But it is kind of a turn off to me personally um, when, you know, people come on with this strong persona and they and it's not humble. It's not humble at all. And it can be a turn off, especially when you're trying to grow your network. So I'd rather come in like I'm the I'm the tiny little flower in a big garden. You know, it's trying to be the big flower in a small garden. I'd rather do that. And I would rather. I would rather interact with people on their level, on their space, elevate them. And when you do that, what they say, a rising, t- a rising tide elevates all ships. You've heard that, a rising tide. Even the biggest of ships, mm-hmm. a rising tide. You see some monster ships and you wonder how in the world, but that water is so strong and so powerful, mm-hmm. it can hold that ship up. So that's how we are. Just consider ourselves little ships. And the more connections we have and the more we network, by way of that, we'll be raised up. But uh, a ship on dry land is not supported by any water. Water, we will equate water to people, right? So we need other people. We have to be humble. That makes sense. You are so amazing. (laughs) What? It is like. When 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 so so when 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 um guest is on the show, and they're being interviewed and they drop some amazing nuggets, I just have to take a moment and tap my chest right here because it was so profound, and um, I wish a lot of people understood what you just said because it's so true. A lot of years of wisdom. Have, a lot of a lot of years of wisdom yes. in here. Yes. Here, here we go. I, don't, I, I bet you that this might be your favorite one. Your value is unlimited. Wow. That's powerful. Yes, our value. Off, too often, people don't succeed yes. because they don't see their own value. They don't, they don't yeah. even think they have value. They don't yes. realize, we don't realize our value is unlimited Right now, each and every one of us has something to offer someone. Each and every one of us, mm-hmm. even our children, they have something to offer someone. I went through a period of life where I felt valueless. I felt like I had nothing to offer. That's when I was wearing the black. Who's going to want me? Who's going to want me? Nobody wants to listen to me. Um, yeah. That's just the opposite. I found out I did have value. Look at me, almost 500 women strong. Because I'm helping, I'm helping to empower yes. them. It's not about me, it's about them. Yes. It's the yes. value that yes. I was able to bring to them. This is what I do. Each month, I bring a speaker of value to come help and further empower these women. It's not me in front of them. It's people like Janelle yes. that I put in front of mm-hmm. them. That's the mm-hmm. value that I bring. So in an indirect way, you can give value to others you know maybe you're not the doctor but you can get the doctor to the table right it could be your connections right right? Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. in an Mm -hmm. indirect way don't think that you don't have any skills in an indirect way you can help other people just by way of who you know or maybe um an old family recipe or a way that your mom did something that helped or she could get rid of fevers or she you, you start tapping into those things and you realize, wow, I didn't realize that, you know, I do know some things. I can help. Um, think about our kids for a minute. Don't yeah. our kids give a, give us a big mm-hmm. smile when they just did something for us and we commend them yeah. and we commend them for that? Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, thank you, yeah. Nala, for, 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 you know, 
clearing the table because I didn't have time to do it and so and so's coming over. You really helped out a yes. lot. Now, what did you just do? You just acknowledged the value yes. of your child, right? And look how it made her feel. Yes. Yes. And she felt like she was contributing. So it's a small thing, but it was a small thing that helped something really big that you needed. So recognizing our own value, but I also want to say it's so important. It's so important when we acknowledge the value of others. Yes. Let us not forget that. We have to acknowledge when people have added value. Everything. They've added value to our lives. We have to acknowledge that. That's important. That's the value, recognizing the value, right? <laughs> so, yes, we all have value. There's something that we can all do. Maybe you're good at doing hair, good at doing nails, good at cooking, good at being a caregiver, good at writing, you know, good at fitness, good at marketing. You know, all kinds of things. Just even good at doing yeah. laundry. That, that that's a that's a that's organizational skills. So that means you're good at organizing. Mm. So there's so many things yeah, that we can yeah. do. Yes. Yes. Just that mindset. It's the mirror moment. Wow. Having the mirror moment, looking in that's the mirror right. and saying, Hey, Sabrina, what what are you good at? What is it that's natural? What what comes natural for mm. me? Everybody probably says mm -hmm. talking because I can talk. <laughs> but I'm a people person. So I guess, you know, yeah. interpersonal skills. Absolutely. But, but we all have that one thing that we're really good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some Without amazing you. wisdom. Absolutely. So we're, we're going to close with this. So before you do go, I would like to, you have a section of general age tips. Can you just give us some tips? of what you've worked on that worked for you, some successful habits? Yes, well, um, getting a good night's rest is one of them. Now I do, I do, I make sure I get my six to seven hours. So I bought a, I bought a, a, a fitness tracker and that told me a lot about myself. So here, here are your tips. I didn't realize that I wasn't getting good quality sleep. That fitness tracker told me that. Also, I didn't realize that I wasn't really eating properly and I wasn't getting the right amount of physical exercise. So if you've never tried a fitness tracker, I'm not going to name a brand, but but they're really good. So that helped me identify some things that I needed to do to keep my body young and fresh. And so they say get eight hours yeah. of sleep. But do you realize that going by your age and your gender, I fell into the six hour category. Yeah. So I make sure that I get yes. that amount of sleep. And it also talks about the quality of your sleep. I didn't realize I wasn't getting that solid. I wasn't getting that yes. solid sleep at night. That also helps us to be refreshed mm -hmm. and fresh for the next day's activity. So, you know, being on top of our game, being ageless, mm -hmm. achieving our dreams and goals has much to do with adequate rest, um, yes. uh, balanced fitness, and balanced eating. I would say that those three things, if you do those three things and having those mirror moments with yourself, they're sure to lead you to an yeah. ageless lifestyle that you will be happy with. You will feel so exhilarated by doing those things and, and you know, really analyzing yourself on a daily basis. You've really got to do that. It's so important. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. I encourage everyone to get this book. If you can't get it today, you're going to watch the replay. Um, Sabrina's website is here on the screen. I encourage you to buy this book. Is You're just not buying a book. You're going to be healthy. You have to apply what's in the book first. Apply. Uh, Sabrina, let everyone know, too, you know, you have your Facebook groups. Let them know as for our life coach, what you can do, you know, you do for your clients and close this out with some successful habits. Sure. I will tell you, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited that you asked me that. So they can join our Facebook group is we, W-E, Women's Entrepreneurial Empowerment. Um, ask to join. I'll let you right into the group. 
And we have a Marketing Monday, by the way. So Monday's the day that you can market yourself. If you own a business, that's the day where you can put your ads out there, your events out there, who you are, what you do. We love to see that. So that's Marketing Monday. The other six days of the week was, is used for motivation and inspiration. If you want to post something motivational, we love you to do that. Uh, on Tuesdays, we have a Facebook Live that's always an expert to inform you on that. The life coaching side of what I do, when you talk about that one big golden nugget, is I assist you in transitioning in your life. Transitioning means change. So I'm, I consider myself a transition life coach. I help you transition from one stage of your life to the next. We first identify that by asking you, where are you in your life? Uh, we have this rating system. Where are you? Once we identify where you are, then it's where would you like to be and how do we get you there? And we start out, mm -hmm. we have actually a process of doing that. And we started with those little process steps and I've gotten some rave reviews. Um, when you go on my website, you look under the life coaching tab, you will see some of the, well, actually I think it's on the homepage. I've gotten some, okay. um, some write-ups in terms of how the life coaching sessions went to. And um, so that's all a part of the coaching process. And I said, eventually, I'm going to be adding financial coaching to that package. I'm in school now. When I talk about it's never too old, here I am now studying. I'm, I'm going to be sitting for my state test. So I'll be licensed wow. to do that. Wow. Yes. Okay. And I, my husband hears me. My husband hears me on the computer. I'm going, yes, yes. You know, when I take a test or whatever. So, so far, I've, I've tested okay in the pre-test. But it is a lot of work. It's a lot of studying. But yeah. if I can do it, if I can do this at my age, being a grandmother, if I can go back and harness skills and training to help me, you know, achieve my goals, you can do it, too. And that's part of my yeah. life coaching is to help you to see that you can mm -hmm. get to those places. So I like to be living proof. I like to walk the talk. I'm not going to be the one to say it unless I'm doing it. So I'm doing yes, it. Yes. I can. I, I got yes. the, the T-shirt to prove it. I'm doing it. So come, come do it with me. So join our group. Come to my website. Also, I have a YouTube channel. Sabrina, approach it. Go to my YouTube channel, and you'll see all kinds of videos from fitness to wellness to how to have a great day, games and things you can play with your kids, how to have good quality family life because it's all about the whole picture of adding life back into yeah. life and being balanced in life. Have to be balanced. So come join me. I will. And I'm going to encourage the group to join you. So everybody, you heard that. So we just want to go over. You're not too old and not too late. Age is just a number. Uh, we went over mindset. We went over mirror moments. Guys, you got to get into the mirror moments. We went into becoming you. We went into ditch the black. <laughs> yes, get rid of that. <laughs> get rid of the black. Oh my God, get rid of the black. We we dive into growing humility. You know, um, we don't dived into some general healthy ageless tips. I want to say that right. Yes, and. You did. We went into ah, Sabrina. I gotta. I would. I need you to do this one before you leave. Sorry. Sure. sure. This one. Protect the pack. Oh my goodness! How do we forget that one? Oh, the, I, I will tell you. The pack is how I found my sanity. That was what got <laughs> me out of this whole thing. So, yeah, I'm walking around in black, but because I'd isolated myself so much, well, I, one of my girlfriends, she threw me a lifeline, invited me to go uh -huh. to dinner with her and a couple other ladies. Long story short, I bonded with these ladies, and it was as I was bonding with these ladies, I realized that we feed on each other. So I wasn't yeah. the only one that was going through change. You see, we need the pack. We all need the pack. It can, could be comprised of two or three girlfriends, a Janelle, uh, even guys. I actually kind of met my husband through the pack. Um, was a shopping for a, was a shopping for a husband. Nothing like that. But because right. I had this pack and we were meeting on common ground, we were all doing things as a group. He came in as part of the yeah. group. And we began to enjoy things like canoeing together and 
and, and um, you know, playing games together. We played some mean Uno right. games. <laughs> and uh -huh, we just all uh -huh, had fun. Uh -huh. But you see, the pack mm -hmm. is where you get re-energized. And there were times mm. where I was kind of falling off the edge a little bit. I called the pack. The pack raised me back up again. And we've done it for each other. Ooh. I remember I remember having an emergency meeting. I called, I gotta talk to somebody, I gotta talk to somebody. And I mean, without question, without question, the three ladies that I call dropped everything they were doing and met me for Aww. dinner. I gave them like three or four hours of notice. Ooh. They met me and they listened to me and they built me up. Wow. So you have to protect the pack. The pack is gonna protect you. What it said, no man's an island, right? You're not going to get there on your own. You're not going to do this yeah. on your own. You need the pack. It's critical, critical to your survival. So uh, if you don't have a pack, start a pack. I tell you how you can start one in the book. But everybody mm -hmm. needs some. Everybody needs somebody. Everybody needs it. That's wow. important. Got to have the pack. Mm. Got to have this book. Got to have the book. <laughs> you got to have the book. Sabrina. Thank you. I hope I Thank can you. bring you back one day. Um, maybe we could do something, you know, maybe uh, special for Mother's Day if we're still in quarantine in the evening. I would love to I just do wanted that. To really, yeah. And and I think Sunday's a good day because it's like, this is like Sunday food, you know, healthy tips. I want to go over some more stuff in here. It's really, really good. Um, I want to thank you for Thank blessing so me and my husband, because we, we read this, we literally read this book amongst other books we did read, because we read books. Um, we're always looking to develop ourselves, enhance, elevate, you know, in spite of life, because life knocks you down, you get back up, you, you know. So how we, we live our life is by looking at other people's experience as well, and reading books and listening to people's testimony because we could do this. And, and sometimes you have to take being vulnerable a little bit to step back and say, well, what is, what is this book about? You know, what is the wake up winning book about? What, what about the, the Lord that healed it thee by Apostle Jordan? Um, Coach Roz, she has a book on, on marriage, marriage planning, you know? So it's very good to really read and get some insights. But I thank you all for watching today's Soul Food. Um, the pink couch is somewhat like a smooth, you know, smooth couch. We, we get into a lot of things, a lot of education, a lot of personal development. And thank you so much for taking your time, Sabrina, to come and hang out with us on this pink couch. Thank you so much. I enjoyed all of you. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, thanks.